In this video, I'm going to go over some of the things that every UI element in WatchKit has, um, as well as cover some of the simpler UI elements that really don't justify having their own video. Before I move on to my um, next couple of videos that are each dedicated to a particular way that users can interact with your app. In the first part of this video, I want to talk about how you can find uh, methods that an element has and um, base methods every element has in WatchKit. So the first thing I want to do is you can see I just have this example app I'm going to make in this video. I'm going to link my I'm going to link my label here to my uh, interface controller. I'm going to call that label. And as you can see, it comes up with this WK interface label afterwards. That WK interface label is the variable type. It's the class type of this variable, and of course, hence the label. If you go command click and you click on this WK interface label in a couple of seconds it's going to give you three functions. These three functions are the functions that are specific to just labels in WatchKit. As you can see a label has a set text and a set text color um, functions that are unique into it because you know that's the things that you can do with text. But as you can see this also extends WK interface object. If we commit, if we control click again on WK interface object, we can see we get firstly this set of functions, and I just I just want to quickly say WK interface object extends NS object. So again, you'll have all these default NS object classes, which then of course extends that. I'm not going to go any further than that, but in here you can see we have all these functions, and these are the default functions that are available of every object in WatchKit. Um, this is also extended by these accessibility functions, which if you're uploading your app to the App Store, and you, it's going to be available to a wide audience, you should uh, definitely look at including in your app accessibility so that um, every user can use your app fully. But back up to here, these objects are the default objects that every element in WatchKit has and um, that you can call upon. And they're the, they're the ones I'm going to be covering in this video. So just one second, I'm going to set up my app. Okay. So now I have, so I just quickly set up all these functions for these buttons just by control dragging and then selecting the action button. And I'm going to go through um, how to set the position to right or left, how to hide and show a element, and how to change the color of the element. So first, let's go to the position. First, we want to call out label. So label dot set horizontal alignment. There's also a set vertical alignment where you're doing exactly the same thing, but you're doing it vertically. But uh, for this video, I'm just going to do the select set horizontal alignment. Click enter. I'm going to click enter again. Um, right button to the end, and then click dot. And as you can see, it gives me a range of values. I'm uh, going to ignore this one, this one, and this one. We're just going to look at center, left, and right. As you can see, I'm going to move the element right, so this one's going to be right. And then it comes up with an error because it doesn't want this bit. Uh, it just auto-fills that, so we can just click this, click there. So as you can see, this is going to call set horizontal alignment on our label, and it's going to accept this uh, WK interface object horizontal alignment of the type right. Now that actually, I'll just show you the way that comes from. That comes from here. This is an MU, I can't quite remember what that word means, but as you can see, it gives you a limited set of options being left, right, and center. And there's another one for WK uh, interface object vertical alignment, top, center, bottom. They're the same thing, they're interchangeable, they're pretty quick to do. So that's just that, label dot. Uh, I'm going to do it again, of course, this time I'm going to call left, and I'll get my error again for that, and as you can see, I'm just going to click, clicked there, and then there. Now this little thing here is a breakpoint, it's used for uh, bug debugging, you want to right click on it, and then delete it, because otherwise it will stop your code and you'll have to press the play button, it will come up down here if you have those. Just, you don't want to use them at the moment, um, you use them later in 
bug checking in if you're doing some more complicated stuff. I don't know why they come up like that. I think it's kind of a really annoying thing in Xcode. The next thing we're going to be doing is setting the hidden property. So label dot set hidden. As you can see right up here. Um, now this accepts a boolean so it can either be true, it is hidden, or false, it's not hidden. Of course here we want to hide it so we're going to set this to true. Uh, R U E. Oops. And next we have label again dot set hidden false because it's taking it from being hidden to being unhidden. And finally we're going to, so that's a pretty quick little thing, uh, finally we're going to do the color. So label dot. This isn't a default thing that all elements have. This is only in the label. I think it's in the button. Actually quite a th few elements that use text have this. Again, if you want to check what you can use on any element, you just go to its outlet and you command click on there. But for this label, we're going to go set color. Oh, sorry, set text color. As you can see, set text, which set text, set text color sets this. And this accepts a UI color. I'm going to click enter, and they're going to go dot. As you can see, there's a whole heap of complicated options here. Uh, for this first one, I think I was setting it to white, so WH. So as you can see, we have default colors. There's everything, sort of all the normal colors like red and purple. As you can see, I'm just going to set it to white. We're going to do this again. Dot set text color UI color dot uh, red color. So this will go to the label, call this set color, and it will pass this UI color element. Probably should address this. UI color can do more complicated things. So if we just get rid of this UI color, you can go in here and you can set colors according to say your RGB spectrum here and of course an alpha. Um, or you can just use those default colors. I'd use the default colors. It's easier. Now that's probably the basics of what um, are generally available. Let's see what else is generally available. We can see that there's set an alpha so we can make it partially hidden. Uh, we can set the height and width in fixed or we can set a relative height and width which of course would be that 0 to 1 decimal um, being a percentage of the page width or height um, and we can of course set it to fixed width but you know they're pretty they're all self-explanatory I'm not going to go over them anymore in this video so let's just run our app and watch all those buttons work so while that builds I just want to talk about two other really basic elements that are found on in our interface library there's the group and the separator. Now both of these don't have many complicated extra features. Of course the group just contains other elements and the separator just separates. Uh, as you can see I've linked them to my interface controller and if we go command click we can see the separator only has one special function, set color, which of course sets the color of the separator. Uh, WK interface group has a couple more. It has some corner radius functions, so if you want to make your UI look special with like rounded corners, um, you can set them there. You can also set the background color or image, either from an image, image data, or image named. As you can see, our app has uh, come up in the simulator. We press the move right button, it moves it right. We press the move left button, it sets that uh, align property to left, and it moves it left. Hide, hides it from the UI, show, shows it in the UI. As you can see, it actually takes it out of the whole flow of the app. If you want the space to remain taken, you can use the alpha and set the alpha to zero, which of course will hide it, but it will still take up the space. Um, our make red changes our text color to red, and our make white changes our text color back to white. So that's the basics of how... Um, the basic things that most, if not all, elements have. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go over switches and uh, let's see what was it? Switches and sliders. They're both really simple properties, um, so I'm going to group them into two into one video. And after that, I'm going to go over date and timers. These are essentially just labels, but they accept in a date time property. 
So I'll have a video covering those two. Uh, I'll have another video covering how to use the map, how to um, set the user's location. Um, then I'm going to have a video on the uh, table and a... Actually, I'll probably have two videos on tables, uh, depending on how I fit them together. One on setting up the table. The second one, handling a table button press, uh, when a button is pressed. Uh, then I'll have a video on images, how where you can store those images, how you can put those images into the UI, how you can load those images from the internet or your phone or whatever. Uh, whatever. Uh, then I will have a video on the movie player. This is a new element um, in WatchKit uh, in WatchOS 2, where you can play movies either from files or from the internet. So I'll have a video dedicated to that. And finally, I will have the I'll probably have quite a few, uh, two or three videos related to the picker because the picker has a lot of special options around it uh, that can that make it a very flexible but very potentially very complicated little element for your UI. So that might have a couple of videos that and I'll do those videos over the coming weeks. Um, after that, I'll be moving on to how you can play audio either short form or long form on the watch. So if you don't care about any of these more advanced UI elements, you can skip those videos and I will have that video on how to play audio on the watch up soon along with those other videos.